Hello guys, it's another episode of Hisendux project and uh, it's a official quest and also the book tutorial uh, that uh, I was requested uh, I guess a few months ago uh, so it's a dash teleport uh, and as you can see from this graph it's the whole uh, logic uh, first of all I'll tell you about the blueprint logic and then a uh, quick breakdown on the VFX so I have uh, the different graph for my uh, dash um, and I also use the person character also I'd like to note that uh, this sample project will be included uh, under this video so on left shift uh, I store my base location of my actor so I can uh, so I know the point from which I need to dash then I need to disable the input so uh, it won't uh, ruin the flow uh, when uh, the character is dashing next thing is to use timer and for the timer uh, I use update uh, rate as raw data seconds the timer is also looping and uh, it's triggering the dash uh, custom event and the reason why I need timer because uh, to make the dash ability fluently uh, I need to like uh, I use uh, set actor location with the simple uh, vector uh, interpolation so I have the base location, I have the desired location then I with the uh, certain uh, frequency uh, I'm interpolating uh, between these vectors to get to the desired position next thing is here uh, so by default I have Negra system uh, apply to my character it's uh, disabled by default one moment please and once I've uh, uh, triggered my uh, ability I need to activate it and then uh, I simply hide my mesh uh, this logic here is uh, our dash ability so I need to store the prediction location to make this, I need to have the actor forward vector multiplied by the certain value, its dash uh, distance. By default, uh, I set the value to 8 meters. Uh, so, uh, this computation will uh, return the vector, uh, like the vector that I will use to uh, define the direction where I will be dashing. And this vector I uh, add to my base location, so it's our predicted location. Set actor location nodes uh, with this simple uh, calculations. So, actor location uh, at the moment with the predicted location, both are connected to the interpolation node. Uh, delta time is 4 delta seconds, and uh, interpolation speed uh, right now is 4. If you have values from 1 to for instance 100 for uh, like 1 means very slow 100 means almost instant uh, update next I need to select sweep uh, so report in case you have the physical animation of your chapter then I break hit result and see whether I'm blocking uh, something uh, this check need is needed uh, to prevent uh, teleporting through the walls so if I have the wall uh, once I can't uh, overlap it uh, sweep will return the true uh, of this operation and I need to stop dashing uh, so this or this condition so I check whether my uh, actual location is uh, nearly equal my predicted location and I also also need to check only two axes that axis uh, isn't important so uh, the error tolerance is one uh, meter or 100 units so whether uh, one of these conditions are true I need to bring back my uh, input so I can move and I need to clear and validate the timer so this function uh, won't be ticking uh, every frame and uh, simply deactivate the Niagara system and bring back the visibility of my charity. So that's the logic. Now I'll uh, show you the breakdown of the VFX. 
So, for the VFX, first of all, because we are using this particle with the skeletal mesh, you need to select the skeletal mesh that you will be using, and right under the asset details, you should check uh, allow CPU access. Next uh, is material. Uh, it's a simple one, uh, like particle color goes to emissive color and alpha multiplied by radial uh, gradient. So uh, the overall uh, shape will be a circle. Uh, it's translucent and lead to side and make sure to select uh, or deselect uh, apply fogging. So the overall cost uh, uh, for this material in instructions will be quite low. Uh, next, you need to create the emitter and the Niagara system. I used uh, sample uh, hand particles and just adjusted uh, some modules. So, uh, first of all, uh, this particle should be GPU simulated with the fixed bounds. Next thing is uh, the spawn rate. Uh, I've gone with the value of 3000. Uh, For the initialized particle, here you can see here you can see uh, default values uh, that should be changed. It's the lifetime, uh, the color, and the uh, sprite size. Let me quickly make it here. Uh, next thing is to add the skeletal mesh uh, location module. Here you need to provide the preview mesh. Uh, that will, that will be using uh, this particle. And uh, all changes that you need to add is to uh, change the mesh sampling time from uh, default one to surface vertices. So by this, uh, each vertice will be uh, providing uh, or spawning the particle. Uh, this system uh, can be and should be uh, expanded uh, to get more interesting results and more proper pipeline, but for the sake of this quick tutorial and for like this ability, this uh, uh, is quite okay to go with this setup. Uh, scale, uh, sprite size, uh, color uh, and file cast state are default modules. I uh, haven't changed anything. I only changed the code noise force to like noise uh, strength is higher. It's uh, 375. Uh, just to make my the movement of my particles uh, update more frequently. As for the sprite renderer, here I've gone with my uh, custom material. So, uh, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback. Uh, I do also have the Discord channel and Patreon page, so if you want to support me, uh, you can go there. And, I guess, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.